So the next song that Karen and Linford are going to do, you will not know if you have only listened to their albums. Is that still right? You haven't secretly recorded it, right? Um, but you will know it if you've ever been to hear them when I've been in the audience, because this is my favorite of their songs, and I beg them to do it every time I'm around. So it's about a marriage, this song that we're going to hear in a minute. And they told me that they would sing it today if I could come up with something to read about a marriage. Not my area of expertise. Um, so I scoured everything I've written and I found like five paragraphs. Four paragraphs. One, two, four paragraphs. So here are four paragraphs to set up my favorite song. These four paragraphs come from my book still and the chapter is called Eucharist One. An Episcopal church in a small town in upstate New York has asked me to come preach. The town is home to two vineyards. There seem to be more maple trees than people. And the church is bedecked, gothic, revival, all arches and parapets and stone sinews. You can see I find myself wanting to move here the minute I arrive. At the Eucharist, I serve as a chalice bearer, following along behind the priest offering the cup of wine to parishioner after parishioner. Some clasp the cup and guzzle it with what looks like relish. Some are daintier, more polite, as though handling fine crystal. Some don't touch the chalice to their lips, but practicing what is called intinction, dip the wafer into the wine and then consume the crimson host. I don't know the people in this congregation. I don't know anything about the triplets who sport pink glasses and bobs like cloche hats. I don't know anything about the man with one arm or the college-aged woman who surely shops at thrift stores. Today she's clad in a polyester pantsuit circa 1969, the jacket and pants and blouse all squash-colored yellow with cinnamon trim. And it is only later, after I ask the priest, that I learn something about the elderly couple who near the end of the communion train come to the rail and kneel, fragile as mushrooms. What I learn later is that for a dozen years, he has been afflicted by a wasting disease, an intestinal disease that makes it almost impossible for him to eat. He lives on Ensure and Lemonade. But at the altar, I don't yet know that. I only know what I see. They each take a wafer from the priest, and when I come to them with the chalice, the wife dips, as I say, the blood of Christ keep you in everlasting life. And she eats her wafer, and then her husband likewise intinks his round of Christ's body into the wine and then hands the round of body and blood to his wife and she eats the wafer for him. There at the communion rail, I don't yet know what illness lies behind this gesture. I only know the couple's hands and mouths and that I am seeing one flesh. I have read about this. I have heard sermons about a man and a woman becoming one flesh. And here at the altar, I see that perhaps this is the way I will come to know such intimacy myself as part of the body of Christ. This body that numbers among its cells and sinews an octogenarian husband and wife who are communion. Oh, 
questions cannot be answered. Who's gonna bury who? We need a love like Johnny, Johnny and Drew. To my feet, you gotta find your way home, mostly all alone. Jacob's ladder is still hanging, but the angels are gone. Long gone. They left the jukebox loaded. Our world exploded. Did the preacher have it all wrong? Is heaven a place you fly off to when the day is done? Or do you work right here on an earthbound love song? I want to see you sway. Sunday afternoon I want your soul to see you An everlasting tune Some questions cannot be answered Who's gonna bury who? We need a love like Johnny Some questions cannot be answered. Who's gonna bury you? We need a love like Johnny, Johnny and June. We need a love like Johnny, Johnny and That it's not three times as long. I feel like I could listen to that song all afternoon. Lindbergh, do you want to tell us why you haven't recorded it? Why we haven't recorded it? He thinks it's not true in some way. It'll be on the next one. Really? Yes. Are you just saying that? No. I thought you thought it wasn't true in some elemental way. Well, we've reconciled that. Excellent. <laughs> going to do an album of hymns, right? Don't you want an OTR hymn album? Yeah. 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 Anything you want, Laura and I will do. Yeah. It's going to be called Winners. 